Many people believe that women supporting women don't publicly say anything when a woman is harming millions of women. But who exactly are we supporting when we believe this? Are we supporting the women who were harmed and gaslit into believing that they weren't? Welcome to Marketing Muckraking, the show that asks not simply what brand culture can do for us, but what it's doing to us. With your host, creative director and brand strategist gone wild, Rachel K. Albers, making fun of business and making business fun. This is the show for rebels, revolutionaries, and renegades who run businesses that burn the rule book. If you're sick of business podcasts that have all the answers, well, I got nothing but questions. Let's go. Episode 11, what you need to know about Rachel Hollis, Marie Forleo, Tony Robbins, Russell Brunson, and the cult of online marketing. The podcast episode that you're about to listen to was recorded in May of 2021 as part of Free School. Keep listening for more on what Free School was exactly and why it culminated in this essay and video. I have thought a lot about whether I should include this in the Marketing Muckraking podcast. This was recorded while I was burning it all down, and the recording is very fiery, to put it lightly. But it's also hilarious, and more importantly, it's also true, which is why I decided to include it here. Nothing has changed since I recorded this last year, except that time has passed and people have forgotten that it ever happened or never knew to begin with. I talk a lot in this recording about putting it on the Google record, and that the scary thing on the internet is not fake news, but no news. And I stand by that. When we are talking about corporations with human faces in the age of the personal brand, one of the most troubling features is that people with self-professed seven, eight, nine figure companies want us to treat them the way that we would a girl next door instead of a corporation. Many people believe that women supporting women don't publicly say anything when a woman is harming millions of women. But who exactly are we supporting when we believe this? Are we supporting the women who were harmed and gaslit into believing that they weren't? This recording doesn't go after small businesses, but the folks at the top who are getting rich by making the rest of us believe that we are all just one funnel away from sitting at the table with them. Just a few weeks ago, Rachel Hollis re-entered the speaking circuit on Russell Brunson's stage. You will hear me address why Russell Brunson in particular is so deeply problematic and troubling in this recording. Let me boil it down to this. He directly compares building an audience and building a business to building a cult. And he uses examples like Hitler to do it, rewriting history and positioning Hitler as a movement builder. He says this in page two of his book, Expert Secrets which Amy Porterfield, another name that I cite in this recording, still has a live affiliate link to on her podcast and blog, where she says, and I quote, no one knows how to build a movement better than super entrepreneur Russell Brunson. Later in the show notes, she says, I loved this book so much, and I know you will too. And in a 2017 interview with Andrew Warner of Mixergy, Warner says, you are the Adolf Hitler of ClickFunnels, and Brunson agrees while laughing. Every person I cite in this recording has supported Brunson over the years and continues to support him, including and especially Rachel Hollis, and has never distanced themselves from him and his harmful approach to business, as they did so performatively last year with Hollis when she made her statements disparaging her housekeeper. So that is why I'm bringing this recording back. It's all still true. It's still deeply troubling, and it should not be lost to Instagram history and forgotten simply because time has passed. As I repeat again and again in this recording, put it on the record. So here we go. It's been a while since we've co-muckraked together. So I thought I would come back to my roots. And you want to know what gave me the final push? You want to know what gave me the final push? So I put together this, this recap to end all recaps. And while I was putting it together, somebody reached out to me and they said, hey, I used to, I I took business by design or something with James Wedmore years and years ago. And people have been reaching out to me because James Wedmore kind of famously uses me as a testimonial asking me if they should invest. 
And some of these people don't have the money to invest. Like they really, they're like making $10 an hour. They could not scrounge together this money. So this person reached out. She says, people come to me to ask me about my opinion on James Wedmore. And I don't have a handy rate cap to send them about why he's problematic. And then these people come and they cannot afford him. And I don't know where to send them. So I Googled. And this person told me, she was like, you did a good job with your SEO. And I'm like, I don't know why that felt like such a compliment. I was like, thank you so much. I was like, you see me. So this person reaches out and says, you did a good job at SEO. I found your video and I sent it to this person. And they were like, oh my God, you saved them from investing in something that they were not ready to invest in. And from a political standpoint, it would have like, it doesn't align with their values. And if it weren't for your video that you created, this isn't on the record because, you know, like we, we've been talking about all this stuff about all these leaders, the Jenna Kutchers and the Rachel Hollis's. Well, Rachel Hollis's are one except she's taken one for the team. And that's in this recap. That's in this. We're going to talk about that in a second. Don't feel too sorry for Rachel Hollis. She's she's just fine right now. She's making a pretty penny while she prepares to do her whole rising Phoenix repentance sinner act. You what? Wait for it. In five, four, three, two. This isn't just that they are Trump supporters and QAnon supporters and things like that. Not all of them, but some of those names I just mentioned, right? It's also that the shit that they're selling doesn't work and it's predatory and they're literally hypnotizing people into buying it. And the majority of the folks buying are not getting the results that they are putting in bold in the testimonial section of their shiny sales pages, right? That's what this is about. But as of yesterday, the only thing that existed about this was a video. There wasn't a handy written recap. So I decided if my SEO is already working on the, on the expose video. Now I got to write it in a written recap. And now it's on the Google record because the Instagram record, that's what these people are banking on that you won't put it on your website, that you won't put it on the Google record, partially because you might be locked up in an NDA. So let's talk about it. Let's take you on a journey. In late 2020, Tyler J. McCall recorded a live video where he denounced James Wedmore, citing Wedmore's Trump support and QAnon ties. Then the video disappeared. What happened? And what does all of this have to do with Rachel Hollis, Jenna Kutcher, and Amy Porterfield? Is Tony Robbins in on it too? And how the hell did I get mixed up in this, right? I, I feel like a 36-year-old Harriet the spy. Except I also happen to be an expert in my field. I'm a brand strategist turned business comedian turned court jester of the royal shit show that is online marketing today. And you'll soon find out why. Once upon a time. I built brands for hundreds of entrepreneurs. I was the rebrand whisperer, taking a brand in transition from business model to marketing strategy, to messaging, to creative direction, to brand and web design. That was my signature process, the entire kit and caboodle. The Monday after the coup, I woke up after 12 years of seven day weeks, endlessly, haplessly trying to scale as I served hundreds of entrepreneurs, helping them wrestle with the unwieldy funnel. Somebody with a slick webinar convinced them they needed something broke. Burnout is a bright red flag waving you in the direction of exactly what you need to burn down next. Saw this coming a mile away. This burnout as old as time and the brand that came before it are both important here because they answered the question, why do you care, RKA? Why do you care? And the follow-up, where do you find the time to follow these people? I care because I spent 12 years cleaning up their messes. I'm not a disgruntled customer. No, 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 no. I just work with other people's disgruntled customers. I didn't find the time. My clients paid me to pay attention to these folks. I watched who they watched. And that included Marie Forleo, Amy Porterfield, Jenna Kutcher, Rachel Hollis, Gabby Bernstein, Chris Carr, Danielle Laporte, Kate Northrup, Laura Belgray, Laura Roeder, Jasmine Starr, Shaw Wasman, Brooke Castillo, Tyler J. McCall, James Wedmore, Lewis Howes, Tim Ferriss, Michael Hyatt, Jeff Walker, Donald Miller, Jim Fortin, Brendan Burchard, Russell Brunson, and Tony Robbins. That's the prologue. In the beginning, my very first client might be a witch because she told me to watch and copy Marie Forleo all those years ago, which ultimately inspired my most popular blog post of all time, You Don't Want Marie Forleo's Website. This same client had me transcribe Marie Forleo's live in the moment booty camp, literally called that, back when robots weren't a thing. So I believe I took the early prototype of her upcoming time management program, Time Genius. And you know, if she brings Josh Pice back for the revival, I really do see the future. So you gotta go for the recap because I've got screenshots now. Like I, I got a screenshot of her live in the moment booty camp opt-in page. This was all the way back when Amy Porterfield marketed herself as a Facebook expert. That was who she was back in the day. I hadn't yet graduating to being the girl boss next door of the entire online marketing industrial complex. 
It might also explain why Amy is clinging so fiercely to the funnel she rode to the dock. They helped her go from just another Facebook surf to queen of the good girls. Amy worked for Tony Robbins, but then she broke free by spending 20K-ish in Marie Forleo's original rich, happy, and hot mastermind alongside Laura Belgrade, Laura Roder. Remember this. All roads lead back to Tony Robbins. Repeat it like a mantra. And I only know this because this client that saw this coming a mile away told me, seething with envy that she wasn't in the room where it happened. And then there is a screenshot of February 2010. It's uh, Marie Forleo, Amy Porterfield, Laura Belgrade, a bunch of other people. I believe, I feel like they're on Richard Branson's private island, but I could be wrong. And then there's some screenshots of like early Porterfield. Oh, like, and like some of her shit got like 50 likes. I love it. Yes, this client of mine consumed courses and masterminds and three-day 10K retreats like I devoured every second of John Hamm and Mad Men. I spent years with her trying to make sense of what my traditional marketing education meant in an online marketing world. Because for the six plus figures she invested in the secret to end all secrets at the end of someone's silky smooth sales pitch, she never seemed to find it. The secret, that is. The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. At first, I thought I was a bad steward of these systems. But then the patterns presented to me again and again and again. 12 years of examples like this. And I rarely met the type of case study student you'll find as shiny testimonials on all these celebrity entrepreneurs' websites. And then there's a picture of promo graphics for B-School, Knowledge Broker Blueprint, which is now becoming Project Next, Product Lunch Formula, Business by Design, Business Made Simple University, High Performance Master's Program, Digital Course Academy, Tribe, and the Life Coach School. I worked with hundreds of brilliant business leaders trying to move from brick and mortar to the World Wide Web, ensnared early on by the smooth stylings of someone who knows their way around a webinar, only to spend money they didn't really have on systems that were never going to serve them. And then they showed up at my door with nothing left in the budget and nothing much to show for all of Marie Forleo's promises that the world needs that special gift that only you have. But because they invested so much in this snake oil, including and especially their trust, most of my clients insisted that I find a way to fit their business into these misshapen dick funnels anyway. They believed there was something wrong with them, not the model. And to be fair, so did I. So they hired my agency to fix it. And I spent 12 years rolling the same stone uphill with all these clothes scorched by online marketing made sleazy. I invested, okay, personally, dozens of extra hours in every single project, re-educating my clients, smart, high-achieving business leaders that would not self-describe as suckers about the realities of modern online marketing and what it would cost, both in terms of time and money, to execute the schemes they learned in some fucking telesummit. I've got to tell you, it's a special type of insult when someone spends thousands of dollars with you only to ignore your best ideas and insist that you do something they heard from a bro in a YouTube ad instead. One day, right around the time I posted the above Brad meme, in fact, I woke up and as the pre-inauguration tension in the United States was at a crescendo, boiling over into the violence of the coup, I said to myself, why the fuck am I building websites for people who insist on repeating the same bad ideas? And that was it. I stopped taking clients that day. And soon after that, my life and business just started to unravel. And you saw it. If you've been here for the ride, you saw it. In February, I started free school, which I thought at the time was simply going to be a fun experiment in teaching everything I know for free in my Instagram stories with no opt-in or follow required. Even that sounded radical at the time, right? But I barely started to warm up when the truth started tapping me on the shoulder, tap, 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 demanding I set it free. Turns out that the lessons that I needed sharing in free school weren't about building website or writing copy but how to become your own creative director and take agency not only of your business, but of your life. The brand names that I referenced early in the free school journey, like Marie Forleo, James Wedmore, were meant to be symbols to help my audience, to help you understand how to spot a bro marketer or girl boss tactics in the wild. Free school didn't start as an expose. No, 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 no. But the more I referenced those few brands I just said in my stories, the more they started exposing themselves and what I innocently thought were just a few handful of greedy showboats hawking their wares with a few spoonfuls of slime turned out to reveal itself to be something much more sinister. Saw this coming a mile away too, but I didn't want to believe it. Nobody ever does. 
especially when we move past the bro marketers to their kids' sisters, the ones they recruit to help make their offerings more inclusive, as Jenna Kutcher explained when she shared how Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi hired her as a consultant for the new program Project Next. All roads lead back to Tony Robbins, remember? More inclusive in this case is code for horizontal scaling to new markets with the same shitty product. It's easy to run from accountability when you're always hopscotching to new audiences via the latest flavor of the month. That's how they get you. Right now, that flavor is Live, Laugh, Love Culture, and its spokeswomen are Jenna Kutcher, Rachel Hollis, and Amy Porterfield. But Marie Forleo walked so Jenna Kutcher could run straight into the arms of Dean Graziosi. Before Jenna was flexing her private jet sessions with Uncle Dean, Marie was the original it girl of horizontal scaling. Meaning Tony Robbins trained and mentored both Marie Forleo and Amy Porterfield, and they've been cross-pollinating their audiences ever fucking since. Never forget that Marie Forleo invented hanging with the bro marketers. She went to Richard Branson's private island when Jenna Kutcher was still in braces. Marie Forleo is the Farrah Fawcett to Jenna Kutcher's Cameron Diaz in Tony's Angels. And then there's pictures of Jenna Kutcher on a private jet with Dean Graziosi, Marie Forleo with Richard Branson at his private island, and then an early ass Tony Robbins interview with Marie Forleo from like 2011. When Marie Forleo's a baby, you gotta go watch it. Go check it out. Rachel, Jenna, Amy.com. All right. Now I know you came here for the tea on James Wedmore and Tyler J. McCall, right? Some of you. And that's talking to the people who get there by SEO. And the lost Trump slash QAnon tapes. But before I can get to them, I had to tell you about the white women who make all this bullshit possible. On the surface, these girl bosses are just washing their faces. But make no mistake, something wicked this way comes. It's very on brand for disappointing white women that so much of this can be traced back to Rachel Hollis and Toilet Gate 2021, the saga of relatability. Rachel Hollis posted her now infamously unrelatable TikTok toilet TED talk on March 31st. Where were you when you first heard the Hollis dehumanize her housekeeper? It's one of those things a basic bitch never forgets. The original TikTok is no longer available, but Brad's lip sync is. And then there's a link to my lip sync is Brad. It seemed like everyone on the internet had opinions about Rachel Hollis, except for Hollis herself, who was busy making Easter baskets all weekend. And her friends, famously, Amy Porterfield and Jenna Kutcher, at least as far as Google is concerned. So I tagged them and wondered aloud in the comments what Amy and Jenna had to say about all this. Jenna Kutcher has entered the chat. I literally had Roberto take a video of me when I opened my first voice message from Jenna. I do not often DM people with who have damn near a million followers, okay? These bitches all just ignore me as I clown around on the internet talking trash in the name of truth. And I'm not afraid to admit that because that is exactly what JK was banking on. I'm going to play this and see if you can hear it. Um, because I put it on YouTube of me, literally this video of, I had, I was like, Roberto, take this video of me opening up a voice message from Jenna fucking Kutcher. Okay. <laughs> I was in my closet when I was getting this. Jenna Kutcher said she agrees with me. That's what you just heard. Okay. Namely, this was what JK was banking on. Namely, that I would be so cowed by her celebrity. And the fact that she would DM with little old me, I might just back off and see that Jenna Kutcher is just a sweet, relatable mom like me. This is also when Jenna revealed to me that she doesn't talk to Rachel Hollis anymore. And why would I think they're friends anyway? Because she just posted that one picture. They haven't even been on each other's podcasts. They don't even follow each other. It was just that one picture. That one picture I'm referring to features Amy Porterfield, Rachel Hollis, and Jenna Kutcher laughing with perfectly tousled hair and messy buns in the suspiciously cohesive color palette. Amy in gray, Rachel in black, Jenna in beige. Their feet are pointed in that perfectly imperfect way that we all hope our feet look like when we try on those ballet flats and check them out in the ankle mirrors at Ann Taylor Loft. If I buy these skinny jeans and then give James Wedmore $30,000, will I laugh in a heap with my biz BFFs at Blackberry Farm too? Should I also get the head wrap? 
Oh, and this pic with 49,960 likes on Jenna's Instagram, only 37,862 on Rachel's Instagram, with Amy coming in at 9,282 for her, her version, also happened to appear on Good Morning America with the headline, Double Tap If You're Lonely, in a campaign led by Kutcher to talk about loneliness. It pairs well with the Facebook Live that Rachel, Jenna, and Amy did the weekend, that picturesque weekend of girlfriending at Blackberry Farm. But why would I think that Jenna Kutcher and Rachel Hollis are friends? It was just one photo and one Good Morning America feature, which paints a very chill portrait of casual lady friendship with the following. Okay, here's a quote from that article. Kutcher, Hollis, and Porterfield made a commitment to their friendship by booking two more getaways while they were together last weekend. They also set friendship rules. No BS come as you are and reach out to one another without needing a response or reply. What? According to Kutcher. What? I just read that like, what? It was just one photo. And the fact that when you Google the term Rachel, Jenna, Amy, the entire first page of results is about their non-existent friendship. I don't know. Go to racheljennaamy.com. You tell me. Maybe Jenna was confused because what I was referring to as a friendship was no more than a corporate partnership. I ended up DMing with Kutcher all Easter weekend who kept telling me she was talking to Trent and Amy. I am so aloof that I thought, is her husband's name Trent? Where have I been? No, she was referring to Trent Shelton and Amy Porterfield. Her husband's name is Drew. You may recognize Trent from his involvement in the Own Your Future slash Project Next dick funnel alongside his pal Jenna, okay? And then there's a picture of everybody all together in their Project Next, Tony Robbins, Dean Graciosi situation. I told you all roads lead back to Tony Robbins. <laughs> Jenna, Amy, and Trent were all in agreement that the best position on their prominent brand partner, Rachel Hollis, was no position, she told me in the voice messages, in between photos of her daughter that she sent almost as if to say, back off. I'm just a mom. Nothing to see here. As a woman who supports women, Jenna told me, it just doesn't seem appropriate to critique Rachel. Another version of RKA might have felt so overwhelmed with pride that someone as big as Jenna Kutcher cared about what I had to say. And I might have misinterpreted that feeling to be a relationship with this woman that moved me to focus my attention elsewhere. Uh, because women who support women don't hold each other accountable. They look the other way. That's how they get you. Sorry, not sorry, Jenna Kutcher. I'm just not as easy as I used to be. I love that one. Um, and by the way, this is where I shared the screenshots of Jenna Kutcher Kutch lighting me. Okay, so I got all the receipts, all the screenshots. Go check them out for your fucking self. So I kept talking about it in my Instagram stories and Jenna Kutcher kept watching them. At one point she approached me and told me she no longer felt safe in communicating with me because I was twisting the facts for my agenda. So she announced that she was disengaging and urged me not to frame it as ghosting. Good thing I have a PhD in Instagram gaslighting by now. So uh, yeah, you guessed it. Saw this coming up my way. More screenshots like her being like, I think you're twisting this for your own purposes, but that's okay. I'm going to, but that's okay. I'm going to disengage here because I feel like this isn't accurate and isn't actually what happened or how it went down. It feels like this is going in a direction that supports your narrative, but doesn't support my truth. Again, I don't know you so well, so I could probably, should probably just keep my mouth shut. Yeah, Jenna. Jenna Kutcher thought that if she graced me with her presence and a few blurry snapshots of her toddler, which I have perceived of as well, I'd back off. She was weaponizing my desire for importance and the social currency that comes with being her friend to get me to shut up to distract me from the fact that Jenna Kutcher is the face of a multi-million dollar company, not just a girl next door. The genius of this unregulated industry of self-appointed experts is that they've been able to skirt accountability in a way that corporations can't by pretending to be people instead of companies. Mix in the mom element, oh, and the millions of women throughout the world who are aching to break free from patriarchy and think their pals, Jenna, Amy, and Rachel can help them do it, suddenly, We've got corporations pretending to be our besties so we'll feel guilty for ever doubting them. Jenna Kutcher was relying on my training as a woman who supports women in support of the man. Support in this context means silence. Where a corporation would be held accountable, a personal brand like Jenna's or her pal Russell Brunson's, ask us to give them grace. When I didn't, she tried to manipulate me another way. This is when I bought Jenna Kutcher is mad at me.com, by the way, which you can go to. In a weird miracle slash mindfuck of sorts, on Easter Sunday, I woke up to a message from Jenna at 1 a.m. 
with a screenshot of what looked like a comment she posted in response to Rachel Hollis. In case you can't see the screenshot, I'll transcribe it here for easy reading. Jenna's comment on Rachel Hollis's privilege post at 1 a.m. on Easter Sunday, April 4th, 2021. I wasn't going to come in here because I have been an imperfect leader in the past and subconsciously lean on my own privilege in problematic ways, but that the fact that I'm losing sleep thinking that my silence may be perceived as support to you and that this message and it couldn't be further from the truth. Wait a minute, you just told me that I was just, this wasn't your truth. Okay, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. It couldn't be further from the truth. Now, the person I once knew and the troubled, angry, dismissive person in this video are very different people. And instead of pointing out all the ways this video and sentiment is wrong as others have eloquently expressed, I wanna say this. You are being called in to do the work. You have a glorious opportunity to apologize, learn and grow and take your community on this journey with you if you choose. Witnessing what that can look like for themselves to learn and understand too. You've consistently boxed out anyone who dares disagree with you or challenges you or calls you in. So I pray those in your inner circle are ready to walk with you through what it takes for you to grow and change into a true a leader. A leader who empowers all women, who can accept feedback, who is capable of change and values her community. I'll be here if you're ready to take those steps and need someone who's trying to be better. And I'm praying for you to recognize just how wrong this is. Pray emoji. But a funny thing happened on the way through the comments. I couldn't find Jenna Kutcher's comment. I reposted it in my stories, though, as, as I now think Jenna expected me to and went on my merry way. But then my DMs started filling up with questions as to where exactly we could find Jenna's official statement. Where was it on the post? Suddenly I realized, oh, damn. <laughs> this ain't no Easter miracle. It's kutch lighting in the third degree. Jenna and Trent and Amy, I don't know, thought this comment would get buried in my stories and drift away in 24 hours, never to be seen again. So I posted it on the grid and now posting it here. The phantom comment. I reached out to Jenna and asked about the phantom comment, by the way, on Easter fucking Sunday. And the kutch answered me immediately, nearly immediately. I'm not even kidding. I had to scroll forever to find it. She lied. This is a self-described Instagram expert who knows that the very fact that she has nearly a million followers means the algorithm will lift her comment and put it at the top, especially for her and Rachel's mutual followers. How many comments and likes are on it? I asked her. No response. She never posted the fucking comment. Why though? Why? Is this as Ash Amber J really just uh, really accused this of just a feud between gal fouls? Cow fouls are two distant brand partners who both profit inadvertently from the other's success. I don't know. <laughs> so while Jenna Kutcher and Rachel Hollis, the women might not be friends anymore. The women, the girl bosses must remain respectful of each other's empires so they can both get filthy rich. And this is why I care. And this is why I care. Because what I stumbled upon, thanks to Rachel Hollis's sweet housekeeper, is a scary network of folks who all monetize our collective desire for security and belonging using tools like hypnosis and then spiritual bypassing the fuck out of us until we all just submit to a world with Tony Robbins as its king, forever paying him and or one of his many inferiors $19.97 per month. But the scary part isn't that the powerful are preying on the less privileged, right, till as old as time, but that there is seemingly no Google record of any of this. Like I said with Jenna and Rachel, the men and women behind these brands might hate each other, but their brands, self-described seven, eight-figure empires, are forced to be best friends forever, entangled in endless NDAs and non-disparagement clauses. Marie Forleo is famous for an aggressive legal team that leaves no negative review left online. This means that the Google record reflects a pristine reputation, not because, as they would have us believe, Oprah's thought leader for a next generation is really so effective at transforming people's lives, but because she's so effective at hiring great legal representation. Ask yourself who this silence serves. How exactly does a woman supporting women hide real reviews from them, robbing them of the full agency and making a buying decision? Which leads me back to James Wedmore and Tyler J. McCall. 
Just as Marie Forleo was the fairy godmother of early online marketing stars like Amy Porterfield, Laura Roeder, and talking shrimp Laura Belgrade through her high-ticket mastermind, James Wedmore is the modern godfather, with folks paying him between 20 to 40K to grab a seat at his table, which comes with elbow rubbing with the latest class of up-and-coming pay-to-players. And one of those players was Tyler J. McCall. Here's a screenshot from J James Wedmore's Facebook feed, and it's got a picture of Tyler J. McCall, it says how a burnt out social media manager built his online business by design. And then it shows the subtitle says Tyler saying, I had a childhood where I always felt like I was on the outside. Ooh, monetize that pain, James. Tyler joined James Wedmore's high ticket mastermind, got in the room where it happens and emerged the new it guy of Instagram. And then like Amy Porterfield did way back when with her Facebook transition to online business in general. Then Tyler stumbled into James Wedmore leading a MAGA meeting. I Oh, JK, but I like to imagine the hilarious circumstances in which Tyler J. McCall could have had this I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus moment with James Wedmore and Donald Trump. Tyler J. McCall discovered that his business mentor and someone he had aggressively supported and affiliated for was affiliating for the granddaddy of sleazy marketers, Donald Trump himself. And maybe Q, best known for his work in QAnon too. Nobody knows. So Tyler hopped on a live video to distance himself from James and express his shock and disgust at discovering that someone he admired and supported could support a vile, even treasonous snake oil salesman like our 45th president? Rumor has it, the video also implicated Brooke Castillo of the Life Coach School and Angie Lee too. I'm just a humble internet outcast who heard it through the grapevine and free speech protects that, which is as good as it gets these days because the video vanished into thin air, never to be seen a buck again. Tyler himself told me in the DMs, which I have, you know, copies of his receipts in this in this takedown after he like jenna kutcher watched my story silently for days without engaging that it wasn't james wedmore who asked him to take it down actually who was it then for castillo angie lee tony robbins donald trump himself was it cute tyler was it cute nobody will ever know because the video is gone forever i didn't even see it but my followers did and fellow free school freshmen. And they kept sending me DMs asking me where it went. I had reached out to Tyler a few times to crickets, the, but that day I tagged him in my stories in relation to James Wedmore. And he leapt into my DMs to clarify his position, much like Jenna Kutcher leapt at the chance to clarify that she is no longer BFS with Rachel Hollis. Speaking of Rachel, a few days after Tyler slid into my DMs and then agreed to an interview with me on my podcast, Making Fun of Business, he backed out via his aptly named assistant, Rachel saying his priorities had changed. And I've got the receipts of that too, so you can read that there. I had offered to steer clear of the topic of James Wedmore completely and focus instead on the change that the industry needs. I'll attach screenshots of our initial chat confirmation email and the cancellation I received just a few hours before our meeting because they speak for themselves. Tyler J. McCall, like Jenna Kutcher, hoped that if he slid into my DMs, I might hold him to the standard I hold my other biz BFFs. Joke's on them. When you burn down your industry and set fire to your reputation, you don't have biz BFFs. Just enemies in high places like Blackberry Farm and Necker Island. And Nashville, the new Jonestown? See my article on the story brand scandal, storybrandscandal.com. Josh Harris, Donald Miller, and Josh Duggar, question mark? Yeah, him too. Which brings me back to Rachel Hollis, who is currently taking one for the team. And by the way, there's a picture now of Rachel Hollis and Tony Robbins and then the whole online marketing industrial complex. And by team, I mean this network of network marketers in coach clothing who are lining their pockets and vice versa as she rides out the latest wave of short-term cancellation and then inevitably comes back as a repentant sinner and slides into the multi-billion dollar I fucked up industry of motivational speakers who used to suck but now are found. Saw this coming a mile away. See, while Jenna initially insisted that she, Trent Shelton, and Amy Porterfield didn't think there was much to discuss publicly in the vein of Rachel's latest holicing, their minds quickly changed as soon as they saw that their customers were paying attention this time. Hmm? After days of silence, Amy Porterfield responded to my post, the one where I called Jenna Kutcher's bluff and shared her phantom comment on the Rachel Hollis thread that she was working on a response, urging, it says, Amy Porterfield, I will be posting soon. Thanks for your patience. Years, people of producing the most hilarious and utterly niche Amy Porterfield jokes, my Full House parody, my Jurassic Park parody, among others. And the warm chocolate chip cookie of the industry never wafted as much as a single watch in my direction. But when I urged her to comment on Rachel Hollis and she knew people were watching, she issued me a curt nine words. I will be posting soon. Thank you for your patience. The next day she told her audience she wanted to share her thoughts on Hollis Gate. Since seeing the conversations and comments with Rachel's post, I did what I believe any friend should do, and I reached out to discuss with Rachel personally. While I have not talked to her yet, 
I want to be clear that I do believe her post was problematic and hurtful for many reasons. And to be honest, reading many of the comments helped me understand the problems in a deeper way. I have not been in this situation before, but I do know that this is my opportunity to move from awareness into practice, continue to do the work, and have the hard conversations. As for the live event, I'll share more with that after I discuss with her. If we are real friends online or in person, and you post something hurtful for wrong, I will personally reach out to you. And my hope is that we will have conversations that are true, honest, and likely very hard. I made a commitment last year to be constant, consistently and deliberately inclusive. That has not changed. I remain committed. I decided to make this a newsfeed post versus an IG story because I know comments are important. While I won't be responding to all comments at this time, I want you to know I will be reading them and I care deeply about you. I have not been in this situation before, Amy shares in her post. A confession that Hollis's comments are the first time something a friend and brand partner said caused her concern? Hmm. This is where it gets fishy, Amy. See, Rachel Hollis is no stranger to outrage. She's been hollising in public for years. BuzzFeed pu published multiple long-form teardowns of her many counts of plagiarizing black writers and passing off a potpourri of Pinterest quotes as her own. And then I link, I have screenshots of two articles. One of them published January 31st, 2019. Headline, influencer Rachel Hollis is facing accusations she is plagiarizing on her Instagram. The next one um, from April 27th, 2020, a little over a year later. Rachel Hollis has apologized after posting a Maya Angelou quote without attribution. What? This was all on the Google record, by the way, unlike Tyler J. McCall's video about James Wedmore. But Amy Porterfield, queen of online marketing made easy, didn't give Rachel a quick Google before becoming enmeshed in multiple brand partnerships? Is this what Amy recommends on her show? Choose your JV partners based on who has the cleanest face and then just hope for the best because you can always take three to five business days to consider your position should said partner do something particularly egregious. And then there's a picture of Dave Hollis, Rachel Hollis, Marie Forleo, and Amy Porterfield um, with some other people that I actually don't know who they are <laughs> uh, at the Rise event from November 10th, 2019, eight months after the initial expose on Rachel Hollis was published. Again, Amy Porterfield, the same Amy Porterfield, currently running ads about her eight-figure business is the face of a company, not the actual girl next door. As far as I know, she and Hobie don't even have any neighbors anymore. They live in the hills of Tennessee now, didn't you know? And their move has nothing to do with the fact that so does Donald Miller, Donald Miller and Michael Hyatt and a whole network of charismatic religious leaders turned marketers who have secularized mind control because it turns out it's a lot more lucrative than saving souls. This is why Tony loves his angels. Bro marketers and their Lamborghinis and inflated dick funnels are easy to hate. They aren't meant to appeal to everyone. They're caricatures, much like Donald Trump, that appeal to a very specific type of personality. Girl bosses, on the other hand, are much harder to hate because they look like our friends, or at least a fantasy of who our friends could be. They have messy buns and ripped jeans and toddlers and toilets that need cleaning. They've got the whole perfectly imperfect thing nailed. It came in a Canva template pack alongside a script about listening and learning and being an imperfect leader anytime a scandal like Hollisgate arises. And more than anything, they've got us fooled into thinking that holding them accountable as we would any other corporation means we're no longer women supporting women. In a corporate environment, it's called whistleblowing. In personal branding, it's called bullying. That's how they get you. But Rachel Hollis isn't the only problematic personal brand slash unregulated corporation folks like Amy Porterfield throw their weight behind. Let me tell you about Russell Brunson, the guy who thinks Hitler is a thought leader. The deeper you go in this dick funnel shaped rabbit hole, the more you find yourself longing for the simpler times of sweet women cleaning each other's toilets. All three of Tony's angels, Jenna Kutcher, Amy Porterfield, and Rachel Hollis support Russell Brunson, founder of ClickFunnels, the software that made him famous after the potato gun, and more importantly, Adolf Hitler. I wish I was joking or exaggerating, but on page, actually I didn't put that down, shit, early page two, page two of Russell Brunson's book slash long form blog post, Double Space to Hive Heaven, Expert Secrets, Russell writes about how he learned to build movements from attractive leaders like Jesus Christ and Adolf Hitler. See for yourself. And then I post the page. In Russell Brunson's own words, it didn't matter if I was studying Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party or Jesus Christ and Christianity. All the examples I found had three things in common that helped them build a mass movement. 
You know, the only reason that I own Russell Brunson's book is because of Amy Porterfield. I first heard about him on her show in 2017 when she said, no one knows how to build a movement better than super entrepreneur Russell Brunson. And I trusted her. How could a woman with a voice the equivalent of a warm chocolate chip cookie steer me wrong? That was my first trip into the heart of a click funnel dick funnel and I'll never forget it. Oh shit. By the way, when I was researching this, the funnel is still live. Amy Porterfield is still making that click funnel money. Cha-ching. Saw this coming a mile away. Russell did the old, I'll give you my book, my book for free song and dance, beckoning from the sewers like Pennywise. Before I knew it, I was clicking within an inch of my life, begging for mercy, wondering if I'll ever see the light of day again. And if you think I'm being dramatic, you've never been relentlessly upsold by Russell Brunson's robots. I'm proud to say I only paid shipping and handling an awesome feat when surrounded by so many seductive bonuses that are all somehow about to disappear forever. Just my luck. I always wander into a webinar that's starting in five minutes and the day that Russell Brunson promises to teach me everything he knows and throw in a George Foreman grill to boot all for just $37? How can I bring this guy down when he lifts me up so selflessly? Coincidentally, the day I received my copy of Expert Secrets was the day Amy Porterfield's voice suddenly felt a lot less like a warm chocolate chip cookie and a lot more like a Dollar Tree air freshener in vanilla bean. If you spent 12 years trapped in someone's dick funnel with only tracking cookies and nothing else and then emerged again to the smell of that vanilla tray tree swaying from your rearview mirror, you might mistake it for the real thing too. And despite Jesus Christ's alleged, alleged involvement, Russell Brunson's book was god awful. And the fact that Amy had so heartily promoted it on her podcast left me feeling ill. Fun fact, the character of Brad the Braggy Bro Marketer was born a few months later. If you've been around since then, you've heard me talk about reverse niching. To get clear on what your brand is for, start with what you're against and how my best content comes from the shit that pisses me off. Now you know that my shit looks eerily like a dick funnel. But I haven't just penned 6,000 words because I'm mad that Amy Porterfield apparently reads at a third grade level based on the enthusiasm she displayed for Russell Brunson's unveiled attempt to create a click funnels cult. The online marketing industrial complex enthusiastically endorses a man who is actively rebranding, i.e. whitewashing history, Adolf Hitler as a movement builder, which I guess makes the Nazi party what, like a club? That's Russell Brunson. And Russell Brunson, in turn, endorses a man with multiple FTC violations. That's Dean Graciosi. And Dean Graciosi is partners with a man accused multiple times of sexual assault who famously victim-blamed a rape survivor at one of his events after he rose to mainstream fame, starring in a film where he used his skills of hypnosis to exacerbate fat phobia and put Gwyneth Paltrow in a fat suit. That's Tony Robbins. And yes, I'm talking about the movie Shallow Howl. I told you, all roads back lead back to Tony Robbins. What universe are we living in where Rachel Hollis is repudiated, but Russell Brunson is celebrated? Isn't it funny how Amy Porterfield has never felt the need to make a statement about Russell Brunson, but she was moved to share her thoughts on Rachel Hollis. Except we know she didn't actually want to share her thoughts because as Jenna Kutcher herself told me, Trent Shelton and Amy Porterfield both urged her to stay mum on Hollisgate until a critical mass of us compelled them to change their minds. And before you go feeling too sorry for Rachel Hollis, remember this. Here's a picture of Rachel Hollis at her Rise event from 2019, which features Brendan Burchard, Marie Forleo, Dave Hollis, Dean Graciosi, Amy Porterfield, Trent Shelton. <sighs> Rachel Hollis may be taking one for the team, but it's still her team. Speaking of Russell, she was just with Brunson in, in Idaho in May 2021. While she performs her mandatory sentence of flying under the radar before doing a Phoenix move of her very own, when she does, I'm going to tell my kids she copied my ass. Very on brand for her. A few weeks later, Jenna Kutcher got Rachel's sloppy seconds because she was then with Russell in Arizona for the, yup, you guessed it, Tony Robbins Own Your Future event May 11th through 15th, 2021, and its subsequent upsell into Project Next. Remember, this is the product that Tony and Dean brought Jenna on as a consultant to help them make it more inclusive. When Jenna Kutcher worked with Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi on their last product, Knowledge Broker Blueprint, also known as KBB to insiders, they marketed it as the last course you'll ever need. And then they changed their minds like a year later and sold that same audience, Project Next, no refund, no discounts, no future updates on KBB. By the way, you know who else was an affiliate for your own, your future Project Next? Dave Hollis who still works for Hollis Co. So Rachel Hollis is making money off of all of this, despite whatever the New York Times has to say about it, wherever she may be currently on the radar. And again, all roads lead back to Tony fucking Robbins. Sorry, James Wedmore and Tyler J. McCall, you're small potatoes compared to these big guns. 
But I'll circle back to you because your story deserves to be on the Google record too. In the middle of all the hubbub of Holoscape, my DM started to overflow with questions about other industry leaders like James Wedmore and what happened to the Tyler J. McCall tapes. And should the person behind the personal brand decide to end this friendship as Jenna Kutcher did with Rachel Hollis and Tyler J. McCall did with James Wedmore, that friendship never ends on Google. Especially if lawyers are involved and money is still flowing as a corporate fruit of this phantom friendship. As I published this post on May 19th, 2021, if I Google Rachel Jenna Amy, this is what you see. And it's a Google search result and they dominate all of the results. The first page. It's them, baby. Jenna might think that Rachel is troubled, angry, dismissive now. Her words, not mine. But she doesn't mind if her pod pockets stay fat from the money that somehow makes its way back to her because folks still think they're friends. Similarly, while Tyler J. McCall told me he did his part and told his friends about what he saw, that how he saw Wedmore kissing Maganon, as well as whoever saw the James Wedmore tapes before Q got him, I guess, the Google record reflects a different story entirely. One where James Wedmore is still Tyler's mentor and Tyler enthusiastically promotes his programs. One where Tyler J. McCall and James Wedmore both get richer because of their perceived association. So neither is in any hurry to divest from the other. One where everyone I just mentioned acts endlessly aloof about all of the above, as if they hope we won't notice them all paying to play with each other. More like they're counting on their own ability to story brand slash whitewash history, or at least Google search history, and gaslight us slash distort the truth through a gorgeous IG grid, more inspirational quotes than you'll know what to do with so much value. A few strategic dashes of listening and learning when something awful happens, or Rachel Hollis is again, and the dollar on the stick dream that you two might sit at their table one day. Who hasn't fantasized about Jenna Kutcher asking you to pass her the gluten-free mac and cheese as you both gaze at the sunset together as Richard Branson and Russell Brunson both look on in admiration under Tony Robbins' watchful eye? Just me? In other words, their brands rely on the Google record not reflecting the truth about them. That's what the internet is all about. But thankfully, the internet is about this too. And by this, I mean this whistle was made for blowing. I'm but the lowly court jester of the royal shit show that is online marketing. Now you can say you have friends in low places, but don't quote me on that in a court of law. Clowning around, trash talking in the name of truth. Nothing to see here. Literally, half of these folks have blocked me by now. How Black Mirror of them. If an RKA blows the whistle after you block her, does she still show up on Google asking for a friend? The best thing that Tony's Angels ever did for me was ignore me. Thanks to this act of service, nobody can say we're friends in the company way or otherwise. But I'm also not going to pretend like I'm above any of this. If any of these women or the dick funnels they wrote in on had ever given me a quarter of a millisecond of the time of day, I would have named my kid after them in gratitude for all I know. The online marketing industrial complex and its SEO optimized friendships had me convinced that I needed to earn their love and that would unlock a door to Willy Wonka's passive income factory or some fucking shit. So I spent years of my life trying to fit my clients' businesses into their misshapen dick funnels and ultimately trying to clown hard enough that they maybe laugh at one of my jokes and take pity on me, I guess. And Jenna Kutcher almost had me. She's skilled at monetizing her own motherhood and then weaponizing it to keep folks from holding her accountable, something she undoubtedly learned from her coach slash mentor slash business partner, Uncle Dean Graziosi. But it was too late. And I was too much of a wild card bitch at that point to be slayed by someone whose podcast I never listened to. Sorry, Jenna. You might have a cool million on Instagram, but it's Amy Porterfield and her warm chocolate chip cookies that I'll never forget. Free school only exists because I'm free of affiliate agreements and brand partnerships and Good Morning America features citing my commitment to these people. In the internet age, we're all swimming upstream in a sea of dumb shit. So why doesn't the Google record reflect all the shit that these leaders have done? It's not fake news we should fear, it's no news. After 12 years of watching my clients and friends ride their way through the labyrinth of dick funnels that somehow always lead back to walking through fire for Tony Robbins, it clicked. Marie Forleo once told me that the world needs the special gift that only I have. Well, here you go, world. I washed my face and then I figured it out. You're welcome. That's fucking so great. That was the greatest thing ever. By the way, still here? Watch the full video for exclusive bonus content, including... My Tony Robbins slash True Blood Theories. Is Tony the Bill in this situation? Is Marie Forleo Pam? Is Jenna Kutcher Sookie? This is making me Porterfield Jessica? I don't know. The Blue Ocean of Phony Tobbins fanfic. If you know, you know. How Josh Price was the real inspiration behind Carly Simon's song, You're So Vain, because she saw the future of Josh walking into Marie's hip-hop Hammerstein ballroom party like he was walking onto a yacht. He had to be there. Why are there so many Northrups? Where do they keep coming from? I'm afraid 
That time I cosplayed as DJ Stephanie, Michelle, Danny, Joey, Jesse, and Kimmy Gibbler from Full House to Woo Amy Porterfield, and all I got was this lousy comment and stab. And why Tony, why Marie Forleo is the city mouse, and Amy Porterfield is the country mouse, and Tony Robbins wrote all of Shallow Hell's fables. That's why you want to watch the original video. Although this video is going into the recap too, because you got to have both. And that's how they get you. Mm. If you want more marketing muckraking and brand strategy gone wild, I invite you to subscribe to this show. And if you enjoyed it, leave me a review. That really helps me out. If you hated it, please send it to your enemies. They sound like good people. You can go to rachelkalbers.com slash subscribe to get these updates in your inbox. And because this show is self-sponsored, if you wanted to support my work, you can go to buymearobe.com. That's where the magic happens. In the meantime, remember, it's not the age of the niche. It's the age of the wildcard bitch. See you on the internet.